Hi guys, welcome to our next lesson which is on the production of sound <coughs> excuse me, or how sound is produced. So everyone's been at a pipe band competition before or some of you actually won't have been. <gasps> so you'll be thinking well I've not been to a pipe band contest before but I've heard somebody hitting a drum or playing bagpipes. I can hear them. How can I hear it? How's sound produced? This goes for anything. All right, your mouth we can talk about how sound is produced from your mouth, alright? But we're going to talk about the four main elements that are required to produce sound. So there's four elements. Can anyone guess the first one? You! <laughs> alright? You are required. You aren't called Brian, alright? You are the originator. You! Alright, you are the originator. Okay, so this could be a group of folk, say we're in a pipe band, it could be a group of originators. Um, and the originator, this is the original source of energy which will set the vibrating body into motion. Okay, and for our purposes, it will be a drummer hitting either a drum pad or a drum. So let's have a look at an originator in action. The originator is the original source of the sound, or the person or object which starts the sound. So you've got me here, about to play the drums, I've got my drumsticks, I've got my drum pads, I'm ready to go. I am the originator, or the original source of sound. Once I start striking the drum pad, that's when I'll start creating sound. But it all starts with the originator, which in this instance is me, or it could be you. Okay, the next element required to produce sound is the vibrating body. Okay, so the originator was you, okay, and you struck the drum skin, alright, so the originator is you, and I'm going to write down here, drum skin, because you have struck that drum skin, alright, which is going to set off the second element, the vibrating body, into motion. So the vibrating body, when struck or set in motion, sends vibrations through the medium, which is the next element. Don't worry yet about that. The vibrating body could be anything, but for our purposes, you would use pipe bands, pipe reeds, or drum skins. These are referred to as vibrating bodies. Vibrations are measured in cycles per second or hertz, and this is known as the frequency of sound. Don't worry about that yet, all right? You'll worry about um, characteristics of sound and how sound is measured further on down the line. So, let's have a wee look at the vibrating body. So the vibrating body in this instance is the drum skin. And when the originator, being you or me or any drummer, or this drummer, strikes the drum skin, he sends the vibrating body into motion. The vibrations travel through the air and they become sound. The third element required to produce sound is the medium. So let's write that down. Medium. And I've just added drum shell and drum skin to the vibrating body. So the medium, this is where the vibrations travel through. All right, so once you've hit the drum, all right, you're sending the vibrations through the drum, through the drum shell. Okay, these vibrations need to travel somewhere. So where are they going to travel? When I'm speaking to you, where, what's happening? Where's my voice traveling through? It's traveling through the air, okay? So the medium would be air. It can also be something else, but just wait a wee second. Note that the sound is affected by the quality or density of the medium. For humans, the best medium is air. If there is a vacuum or a situation where no medium is present, then no sound can be generated. Okay? And another one would be water. Alright, because sound, when produced in water, can travel through water. 
and you'll see that it can also travel through water when you're in the pool and somebody's shouting. It doesn't travel as well if somebody's shouting outside the pool, but it will travel kinda, so you'll, you'll kinda hear it. So the medium could be air or water, okay? And it was saying if there's a vacuum, i.e. there's no air present, then no sound can be generated. Okay, I can't think of a scenario where there's no air. Let's say space. For example, there's no air in space, so we can't generate sound. You could produce sound from something in space, all right, but the sound won't be heard in space. It's got nowhere to travel, okay? It's not got air or water to travel. The medium is where the sound travels through. So this is the air or the water. So you see the drummers hitting the drum, the sound's going to travel through the air and it can also travel through the water as vibrations to the ear where it's transmitted to recognisable sounds. And the final element, number four, is the receptor. So, the receptor, when I talk about the receptor I like to think of the word receive. Alright, so the receptor is what's receiving the sound. Alright, so for us, it's these bad boys, it's your ear. And this is where the vibrations are converted by your brain into recognisable sounds. So all these vibrations travelling through the air are converted by your brain into re recognisable sounds or voices. A microphone can also be a receptor. Okay, so for example, if you're speaking into a microphone like this, the microphone... Um, vibrations are transferred into the microphone and blasted out through the speaker. So a microphone could be a receptor. Excuse me. Some underwater animals who don't have ears can detect vibrations through their highly sensitive nervous systems. Therefore their bodies become the receptor. So let's say animals like dolphins for example. Okay, they can't talk but they send um, vibrations, like they make, I'm, I'm not going to do it, but the dolphins the sounds, these travel by vibration through the water, and then another dolphin could be miles away and it'll feel it, recognise it, its bodies became the receptor, all right, and recognises what's being said, all right, very, very clever, but for us, the main one is ear, and as I said before, it can also be a microphone, so I'll write that down as well. So here is a wee bit about the receptor. So for us, the receptor is the ear. The receptor can also be a microphone. So the originator is you, the original source of energy. You have struck the vibrating body, which is the drum skin. The vibrations have travelled through the medium, which is the air or water. And they've travelled all the way to the receptor, which is your ear or the microphone, where they are transmitted into recognisable sounds. Right, so let's recap. So there was four elements required to produce sound. You needed the originator, which was you, okay? You're the original source of the sound, okay? Vibrating body for us, which was the drum shell or the drum skin. So the originator, let's say I'm the originator. I've struck the drum shell. The drum shell? I wouldn't hit the drum shell. I've struck the drum skin, okay? And the drum skin starts vibrating and you won't notice it vibrating like that, okay? But it does vibrate a little bit or vibrates a lot, but you, you won't see it. That vibrations go through the drum shell, all right? through the bottom skin and then sent out to the medium which is air or water so when I hit hit the drum the person beside me say they're right beside me it's not far for that sound or vibrations to travel so it's going to be really really loud all right but if they're further away then it's going to be a bit quieter and I can't remember what the speed of sound is you don't need to know that for this all right but say somebody hits it and they're quite far away <clears throat> By the time the sounds travel to them, not only will there be a bit of a delay, but it will also be very, very quiet because the vibrations have shrunk as they go through the air. Okay, 
and then once they've travelled through the air they hit the receptor which for this benefit or purpose is you and your ear okay and it can also be a microphone so I said you could have your mouth <laughs> you could be <coughs> when you speak you produce sound so if you're speaking the originator would be you or next you're setting the vibration motion vibrating body into motion vibrating body would be your tongue <laughs> all right and you'll notice when you're talking your tongue goes up and down all over the place it's really really fast all right so your tongue is a vibrating body and your mouth also vibrating body almost like an amplifier taking these vibrations and <laughs> spitting them out okay these vibrations travel through the medium which is for the main one being air to the receptor which is your ear okay so I've spoke it's traveled through the air to the receptor which is whoever I'm talking to is ear and you can think of that as well when you're talking about the microphone okay you tongue mouth through the medium and air bear in mind it's not going to fire travel if it's doing that but you still need air all right for the sound to be produced and then the receptor and they say that if one of these elements are missing then sound cannot be produced that's what the official handout says okay so <clears throat> that's them there and you will be asked about these on your tests you might well be asked to explain them a little bit if you do explain them like we did there the originator would be the original source or the original energy of the sound vibrating body for the drummers it would be the drum skin and the drum shell pipers it would be your pipe reed medium which is the air which is where the sound's traveling after it's left the drum or your mouth when we were talking about earlier and receptor it's going to the audience's ear all right so that's where the sound is received and remember it's received Remember, it's received in the ear which has vibrations and your brain converts these vibrations into recognisable sounds. And again, as always, I'll put a couple of slides up um, which you can copy out and write down if you need. And I hope you enjoyed the lesson. Thank you.